What's going on my dear friends? Today in this video, let's learn and master the Angular Framework's latest version. So, let's get started. Alright guys, so let's quickly look for a use case of this Angular service. So for this we will use the post service. So first thing first, let's define a list of post objects arrays inside the post list service file. So first declare a variable post and inside that the variable type is an array. And next simply I declared few post objects with post ID, title and post. Now I want to load this post list inside the post list component. So let's do this. So guys, how do we do that? Very simple. First, we have to inject this post service to the post list component. So how do we do that? Very simple. Inside the constructor parentheses, add the injection. First, add the private keyword. After this keyword, add the variable name something post service with uppercase s. So this is just a variable name. As a good practice, most of the time we define this variable name as the service name. But the first letter is lowercase and the other each word first letter must be uppercase letters. Alright, so next after this add the service name followed by colon. So our service name is post service with the capitalized first letter. Set this to complete. This will add the import statement. Perfect. So successfully we injected the post service to this post list component. Now guys using this we can access the post array right so let's do this so inside the same constructor we can access and get the post array items right so inside this the injector service name is post service with lowercase p after this dot now in this drop down we can see that we can access the post array so select this now in order to use this inside the template we have to assign this to a global variable so let's create a variable for this post set this type to array and set array type as any so guys don't worry about this any data type we'll come back to this in the next lecture so now inside this constructor assign this post service array to this variable post that's it so guys now next inside the post is component is file Let's uh, show this variable inside the browser view. So same like the previous, we'll add this inside of the unordered list tags. So inside this li tags, add a string interpolation and inside this, the variable name is post. So guys, this is an array of objects. So in order to load an object inside the browser view, we have to use the JSON pipe. So simply add that here. That's it. So save this and go to the browser. As you guys can see here, we got this post array objects. Uh, but guys, uh, um, so guys, when we're learning this JSON pipe, I said that we use this JSON pipe only in the development stage. So we cannot show this post data to the end user something like this in JSON format. It's not a good user experience, right? So if it is not a good practice, then how we load this array data inside the browser view? So guys, if you can remember, we can use for loop to render these array values, right? So for this, we have the old ng4 method and the latest syntax approach. So we learned about this in detail. So throughout this course, I will only use the latest syntax approach for this, right? Um, Alright, so let's do this inside the post is component HTML file. First thing first, let's create the for loop syntax. So how do we do that? First add the add symbol, after this directive name, for. Next add the parentheses and the loop scope. Now inside this pass the loop condition, let post of posts, this is a new variable and this is the our post variable now next uh, at last don't forget to add the track property 
for this for loop otherwise this will not work so we learned about in detail in the angular directive section all right so guys this is the variable that we created inside the post list component ts file right so now this uh, will loop through each and every array items and assign that items to this new post variable so by accessing this variable we can render the post details inside the view so inside the scope let's add the li tag and inside this add the string interpolation um, now let's render only the post title so this post variable after this dot title that's it so save this and go to the browser as you guys can see here we got this now in a more user-friendly way cool right so guys uh, in a real world application we will not directly access any variables inside of a service file we will access the values via calling to a method so let's see this in action inside the post service file create a method something get post after this method parentheses and the method scope now inside this simply return this post array variable first add the return keyword after this add the post array variable name that's it so guys simply this method will return this post array value when we call this method from the post list component now guys inside the post list component simply change this remove this variable after this and simply call the get post method that's it so once again guys this will return this post array when we call this get data method and we are storing that returning post array values inside this another variable so inside the view we are rendering the post arrays values using this for loop syntax perfect so save this all and go to the browser as you guys can see here we got the post titles which means this is working as before perfect Alright guys, next what I want to do is I want to add a new value to this post array. So how do we do that? Very simple. We can do this using the array push method in JavaScript. So let's do this. For this first we need a button. So inside the post list component HTML file, let's create a button. Set the button name as add post. So after this, add the click event and from here call a method something add post. So now inside the post is component create this method. So down here the method name is add post. So after this the parentheses and the method scope. Now inside this let's define a uh, let's define a dummy post object to push into this post array. So create a variable something post data with let keyword. So after this assign this to a dummy post array with this key value pairs id title and the post details next now we have to push this newly created post object to the post array which is stored inside the post service file so how do we do that nothing much here very simple all we have to do here is we have to send this new post object to the service file so for this we'll create another method inside the post service file and we'll receive the new post object as a parameter for that method so let's do this inside the post service down here after this let's create a method something called add post service so after this as usual add the parentheses and the method scope so now before writing the push logic we'll send the data from the post list component so inside the add post method let's call the add post service method so after this, this dot post service, which is the injected post service. After this dot, from this drop down, select this and post service method, and add the parentheses. Now send this post array value to this method as a parameter. That's it. All right. So now, guys, as you guys can see here, we are getting a compile error. Why is that? Because we are sending this parameter from here to this service method but from the service we are not capturing it so in order to capture this simply add a parameter variable inside this add post service parenthesis something new post and set the type as any now inside this let's log this parameter variable so we can check whether this is working or not so console.log 
and inside this log pass the parameter variable new post. So now save this all and go to the browser. Click on this add post button. As you guys can see here inside the browser console, we got this new post object, which means everything working as we expected. All right, guys, now we have the data inside the post service. Now let's push this value to the post array. So inside this add post service method, add this. So this dot the post array variable name post after this again dot and add the push method. At last, don't forget to add the parentheses. So now to this method, pass the new post object as a parameter. So this will push this value to the post array. That's it. So save this and go to the browser. Now again, click on this button. As you guys can see here, the new post title is loaded here. If I click again, we got another new post value rendered inside this unordered list. So guys, every time I click this button, a new post object will push into our post array object. So which is declared inside the post service file. Cool, right? Um, all right, guys. So this is another use case of an Angular service. We always aim to keep our template code clean and focus more on the presentation logic. So by using services, we offload the heavy lifting like managing data or performing operations from the component file to the service file. So this keeps our components lightweight and easy to maintain. So hope you guys got the idea. All right guys, so we have just finished pushing new post to our list whenever we click the button. But let's talk about something important. Think that if we make something mistake when we're dealing with this new post object, mistakes can happen, right? So for example, imagine you accidentally make a typo in your code, something like this. Instead of title key, by mistake, if you type double E end of this, what will happen? So let's see, save this and go to the browser. As you guys can see here, when I click this, I get this empty post title value. Why is that? Guys, as we know, we made a spelling mistake in intentionally on this title key. And because of that, we are pushing invalid data into our post list because we are pulling the title value from the post object array. So when we add this invalid post title, this loop cannot get the title value because this time the title key is misspelled. So that's why this loaded an empty post value. Um, wait, I show you this. Inside the post service, let's add a console log inside this add post method and log this post array. That's it. So save this and go to the browser. As you guys can see here, when I click this button, we got this log inside the browser console. If I expand this, look at this last post title key. It's misspelled. So this is the problem here. So guys, when we render the post using Angular's for loop directive, and string interpolation, we are expecting the title key to display the post title. But since there is no title key due to the mistake we made, the result is an empty entry. So that's how we got this empty value. Guys, these kinds of human errors can be most often, right? Because we are humans, mistakes can happen, right? So but in this simple example, we can easily spot the error. But in real world application, especially when dealing with the data from a database, so spotting such errors might not be easy and time consuming. To avoid these kinds of mistakes, we can simply use a TypeScript interface. So guys, what is this interface? Can any of you guys tell me? Alright, so let me explain. A TypeScript interface is like a blueprint or a contract for our data object. It defines the structure of an object, specifying what keys it should have and what types of value those keys should hold. For example, we can simply define our post object shape using an interface by adding the key names and the values data types of that keys can hold. By using an interface, we are telling TypeScript, hey, this object must have these specific keys and those keys must have values of these specific types right so if we try to create an object that doesn't match the blueprint 
TypeScript will throw an error helping us catch mistakes before they become a problem. Alright, so let's see this in action. So guys, let's define the interface inside this service file. So top here before this injection. Uh, so guys, to define an interface, we have to use the interface keyword. So interface with lowercase i. After this, define an interface name, something post. Define this with uppercase p. Same like defining a TypeScript class, right? Now next, add the interface scope by adding curly brackets. Now inside this, we can create the blueprint of our post object. So first we need id. So the key is id and set this type as number. Next, the post title. So the key must be the title and the data type is a string. So next key is post and this type also a string value. That's it. So guys, with this, we are defining the shape of the post object. So now using this, we can implement this structure whenever we create or manipulate a post object in our application. So this means that any post object we create must have an ID of type number, a title of type string and a post content of type string. All right. So now we have the interface. Let's see how we can use this. If you guys can remember when we defined this post array, we added this data type as any. So using this any data type is not a good practice in Angular. So now we can define this array object using our interface. So let's do this. Inside this, remove this any data type and add the data type of this array to our interface. Just pass this inside of lower than and greater than symbol. The interface name is post. So now guys, this will ensure that every object in the post array follows the structure defined by our post interface. So this means each post must have an ID of type number, a title of type string and a post content of type string. So now guys, if I change the first value ID key as I double D, as you guys can see here, we are getting this error unknown key. So this is the beauty of an angular interface. So this interface structure will help us to avoid mistakes and ensure that our data is consistent. So hope you guys got the idea. Alright guys, now using this interface, we can validate our new post and then we can minimize these kinds of typos. So let's see how to do this. It's very simple. Just set this add post method parameter variables type to post interface. That's it. So save this and look inside the post list component, add post method. We are getting this error in this service method code. So this is showing that we cannot assign this parameter value to type post interface data type. So guys, this is another beauty of this interface. So we know that we made this typing error in this new post object title key. So in previous, this pushed this data without catching the error. But with the interface, we are getting this before we run this code. Cool, right? Alright, so guys, in order to prevent this error, we have to change this title key, same as the interface title key. So remove this extra E here. And now there is no errors. So guys, here in the post interface, I defined this ID data type as a number. But think by mistake, if I pass a string to this ID field, as you guys can see here, again, we got this error. So when we use an Angular interface, we have to pass the exact data types specified in that interface. If the interface says ID should be a number, then only a number is allowed. If you are trying to pass anything else like string, TypeScript will catch that mistake right away and throw an error. This helps us to avoid issues that could be cause bugs in our application and ensures that our data is always correctly typed and reliable. So guys, now we can take this type of checking another level up by adding another layer of checking inside this post list component. So for this, we need the post interface inside this post list component as well. So as you guys know, we define this post interface inside the post service. 
so it's a different file and we cannot directly access that from this post list component so how do we access this for this guys we have three approaches so the first one is we can simply define again another post interface inside this component file and we can use that here but it's not a good practice repeating the same interface again and again for our example like this for one component we can do that but think if we have more than hundreds of components and at least 10 of them using the same interface so this approach is not practical right so the second approach is we can simply access this interface which declared inside the user service file for this all we have to do is just simply export this from here so we can access this interface from anywhere within our angular application so let's see this in action in order to access this interface outside of this service file we have to export this right so add before this export keyword next inside this post is component first we have to import that interface to use within this component so how do we do that very simple just add the import statement of the interface here so top here guys this interface also inside the same post service file so inside this curly brackets and the interface name post with uppercase p so now we can use this interface so down here inside the add post method simply add this post object variable type as this interface so how do we add that after this add a colon symbol and set the type as post interface p is uppercase that's it so now this variable will get the shape of this post interface if you try to do change of this shape of this object this will immediately throw an error perfect right so guys this is the second approach this approach is better than the first approach but guys for this we have a more cleaner approach so which is for this interface we can create a separate file like these components and services files so let's see this in action for this guys we can use the angular cli so inside the terminal run this command ngg this g stands for generate right so after this now we are going to generate an interface so after this add interface now give it a name and the path so as as a good practice we will use a separate folder for this interfaces as well so add the folder name interface and after this slash add the interface name post that's it so hit enter this will generate the interface now guys inside this interface folder we can find the post interface open this as you guys can see here by default angular has already defined the interface with the interface name and with the export keyword so now all we have to do here is we can simply define the shape of our post object um, we already defined this inside the post service so let's remove this from here and add this inside this post interface file that's it so now we have the separate post interface file guys now we are getting some errors because now we are removed the post interface from the post service file so now let's import the post interface inside this so top here import inside curly brackets interface name is post with uppercase p and this is coming from at the path of this post interface so this is inside of the interfaces folder so dot slash interface and the after this slash and the interface name is post now as you guys can see here all the compiled errors are gone so now these post variables are using this external post interface so guys we can use this external interface also inside of all other components same like the angular services all we have to do here is just simply import the interface inside of that relevant component inside the process component so remove the previous import and add the new import so same as the previous so i will copy and paste this import statement from the post service that's it so now this new post array is using the external post interface so like this we can use this interface in everywhere inside of our angular components awesome right all right so guys simply this is 
the simple use case of a TypeScript interface. So by using these interfaces, we can simply define the structure of our objects. We can prevent many common mistakes and ensure that our data is always correctly formatted. This is especially valuable in large applications where managing so many of data. So hope you guys got the idea. So guys, before we move on from this interface, let's quickly look at optional fields in these interfaces. So guys, we define these post interfaces with these fields and all of these fields are required when we're declaring an object using this interface type. Let I show you from this new post object, remove this ID key value. As you guys can see here, this is throwing an error. So guys, think sometimes we need optional fields. Think like the username who is posting a new post. Sometimes some user may don't like to post their names. So in that case, if you kept this username field required, this can lead to a big issue. So in order to fix this, we can use the optional fields in the interfaces. So let's see this in action. So inside the post interface, let's add the key for this. The key name is something username and set this type as string. So save this as you guys can see here inside the post service and also inside the post is component, we are getting compiled errors. So why is that happening? Guys, it's because we added a new field username inside this post interface. But in all other places, we are using the post interface. This new field username hasn't been created yet. So as I said before, this field is required. So in order to prevent this error, we can simply make this optional field. So how do we do that? Very simple. Just add a question mark after this. That's all. So save this. Now, as you guys can see here, all the errors gone. So now if we want, we can add this username field to our post object or if not, we can simply ignore this username field. So hope you guys got the idea. So guys, this is the simple use case of an optional field in an interface type. Um, I think that's it for the interfaces. So let's quickly move on to the next lesson.